From 1914 to 1918, World War I raged throughout battlefields all over Europe. Technological and industrial sophistication in the ways of warfare had produced incredible casualty rates rarely seen before in history. Grueling trench warfare contributed to bloody stalemates on all fronts, in which many commanders of the time failed to adapt to the rapidly changing conditions of the war. The two main opposing forces of the conflict were the Allied and Central Powers. The Russian Empire began the war on the side of the Allies. The United States formally entered the war supporting the Allied cause in April 1917, after years of a non-intervention policy. In June 1917, a Russian army offensive was decisively defeated by German and Austro-Hungarian forces on the Eastern Front. The Russian army had been plagued by mutinies and desertions due to the unpopularity of the government's handling of the country's affairs. This led to Russia's exit from the war and the Communist Revolution in October 1917. The Allied Russian government had been overthrown by Bolshevik forces. In March 1918, Soviet Russia and the Central Powers signed a treaty, formally ending the war between them. Russia had been a major ally of the Western powers during the war, and now their exit led to a crisis for the Allies. An elite Czechoslovakian legion, which had been an ally of pre-Soviet Russia fighting the Germans, was stuck inside interior Russia, surrounded by hostile Bolshevik forces. In an effort to protect the Czech troops in Russia, prevent Allied war material stockpiles falling into enemy hands, and to secure northern Russian ports from Germans, the Allies sent a multinational force into North Russia. Britain and France had requested the United States send troops for the effort, and President Woodrow Wilson agreed to a limited intervention. 5,000 American forces arrived in Arkhangelsk, Russia, under British command on September 4, 1918, for what would be later known as the Polar Bear Expedition. Altogether, the Allies had approximately 15,000 troops, including British, Canadian, and French forces. As soon as the Allies arrived in Russia, it was clear that the objectives of the commanders were optimistic and unrealistic. The American troops were quickly sent on offensive operations on two fronts that were hundreds of miles long. They had engaged and managed to push back the Bolshevik forces for six weeks. However, by October 1918, the two fronts became extremely narrow and difficult to supply, maintain, and protect. Because of this, they could no longer engage in offensive operations and quickly adapted defensive positions for the onset of the Russian winter. It was also believed that several thousand local anti-communist White Guard, or White Russians, would join the Allies in the fight against the Bolshevik forces. However, it was soon realized that they could never recruit that many volunteers, and many of the ones who did quickly deserted or defected to the enemy. With these facts and no hope of additional reinforcements, it was decided to give up their goal of linking with the Czech Legion and just hold their positions and not be pushed into the sea by the much larger Bolshevik army. During the winter, the Bolshevik army decided to go on an offensive against the Allied positions which caused them to retreat a considerable distance back towards their base of operations. Also in November 1918, World War I officially ended and many American soldiers wondered why they were still fighting in Russia. By April 1919, the order was given to withdraw all of the American troops at the earliest possible moment. By mid-July, all of the American forces were gone from North Russia. Around the same time, a volunteer British force also arrived to take their place for the time being. The American forces suffered about 550 casualties with 110 dead from battle and 80 from disease, most notably the Spanish flu. Many in the American public never knew that their country's soldiers fought the Russian communists on their own soil. By October 1919, the last of the British forces left North Russia due to the inability to hold the flanks and the increasing mutinies of the white Russian forces. Arkhangelsk fell to the communist forces in February 1920. 
the Czech Legion eventually left Russia via the port of Vladivostok in September 1920. Since 1918, they had fought their way across Russia along the Trans-Siberian Railway. The area around Vladivostok saw a similar Allied incursion at the same time of the North Russia Campaign. The last American and Allied soldiers left there in 1920. The Soviet Union lasted until 1991.